G'day legends. Look, it's a long time in between reviews, but I thought I'd rather test the car out, test all the gear out and really put it through its paces before I got back to you guys with my real thoughts. I mean, I think the last time I did it, I just got most of the gear and then the next review after that was maybe 10,000 kilometers after it. So here we go. Overall, I absolutely love the Troopy. It's done everything I could have wished for and more. It's a beautiful car to look at. It's a beautiful car to drive. It's obviously not a, not a 200 series comfort wise car, but it's, uh, it's bloody awesome and you fall in love with them the moment you get them. So it's not exactly a city car to drive around. Um, I think we all can, uh, can agree on that. It's big, it's heavy, it's pain in the ass to park, uh, but I still drive it in the city because I, you know, I thought, what's the point of having a second car and having to pay for a second rego, a second lot of fuel, and have this car sitting around, um, you know, waiting until I'm actually on the road and out bush, out back, so. Here we go, starting from the front. The five post uh, tough bulba and side, uh, extra wide side steps have been incredible. Uh, I've copped a few, you know, critics here and there saying it's a human killer. I mean, sorry, but what fucking bull bar is he's not going to do damage to anyone it hits. So this priority for me is keeping this safe and keeping me safe. It's a very, very expensive engine, very, very expensive car. So it's done the job uh, with the extra wide brush bars as well. Um, for where I go and the bush and what and scrub I push through, they're perfect. So they, you know, they reduce the chances of um, some serious scratching on the car. Um, and you know, they look after your wheel arches, your flares, you know, your mirrors and whatnot. So they've been awesome. It is heavy, um, but it does exactly what it's there for, and it's it, yeah, it fulfills its purpose. Uh, up front, I have the Runva 13 XP winch. That's got me out of some pretty serious situations. Um, I was actually, quite a few times I was sitting there going, you know, no matter what winch I've got, it's not gonna pull this truck out of what I've got into. But sure enough, um, that Runva certainly has some power and, uh, and I'd back it any day of the week. So it's cheaper than your, um, than your, your go-to brands, but, and, just as good, so absolutely love it. Um, the Runva 13 XP. The engine. Now I had a I had a remap done early on. The remap's been awesome. It's given it better fuel efficiency. It's increased the power. I haven't put it on the um, uh, bloody mind blank. I haven't tested the power and what it increased it to. Hold on. Dogs are running off. Um, haven't tested it to what it's actually capable of in power wise, of course. Uh, but it's, it definitely helped it. And I recall the day I did it, the acceleration, um, the fuel efficiency has, has uh, yeah, it's kind of sat about the same, to be honest. I also had a throttle control put in. Now, the throttle control started to, I didn't use it all that often, all right, so, it could increase the power and the um, sensitivity of your accelerator uh, pedal um, or it could decrease it if you're towing so i didn't use it all that often and then it started actually affecting the sensor uh, in the car and started putting the car into limp mode so i actually just got rid of it all together um, and i figured look unless i'm going to tow a caravan or whatever then i probably won't get another one um, the, I've stepped up, since the last uh, review, I've stepped up the Coopers to the 315 ST Max. Now, I actually feel they hold the size of the car a lot better. Um, they're obviously a bigger tyre, a slightly wider profile, uh, better for forward driving, better for the, st the stability of the height of the car, and of course the weight. Uh, great for on the beach, obviously you're covering that little bit more surface area. Um, and I've gone for the dynamic uh, wheel co now, the soft eight. So they're great, just the steel rims, uh, haven't had an issue with them. 
tech stuff is just recently putting the old sun visor on. To be honest, the main reason I put the sun visor on is because I like the look. I remember the old Troopies had the sun visors uh, and I wanted to include it on mine. It is good for midday driving, especially when you're up in the desert. Just keeps that little bit of less heat and sun straight off your hands and off the top of the dash. Safari Snorkel. Uh, we've got the Armax. Uh, that thing bloody whistles when you when you uh, put the car put the throttle down. So uh, I haven't tested the car in you know some seriously deep water. You just don't find too much deep water over here in WA. You find mud puddles and whatnot, but uh, you know nothing like say over far north Queensland and up the Cape York track. So I haven't had the opportunity to really test the car in that way, uh, deep water. Um, you know, I don't see the point in going looking for it, but I know some people love that, so I can't give you an honest answer on uh, on the Armax and the car going through water. Slowly work our way back to the car. Um, next, we've got the laser lamps. We've got the triple R up the top, uh, and down here. Uh, I've cut into the bull bar, and I think I mentioned this on the original review. Uh, we've got the ST2 laser lamp, so just the spreaders, I've got them on a different switch. So if I do have the car, um, if I do have the high beams on, I can flick between using those, the triple R or both. Uh, but most of the times, uh, especially if I'm just like casual bush driving, I just use the, the STRs. Um, uh, ST2, sorry, just the spreaders with the high beams. Uh, the triple R is insane. The power, the amount of light at night, it's amazing for night driving because it actually does, it wakes you up a little bit. It doesn't have that, you know, that orange glow that kind of puts you to sleep. It's just a nice white light, um, and I find it beautiful for, for that long distance, big open highway driving. The Tracklander tent topper. Uh, it's great, I have put a tent on there. I put the James Brew tent on there, but of course it doesn't fit because it's made for the older tents. So I have, at the back here, uh, I'll cut to the clip. At the back here, I've kind of fabbed up a few little bars that support and get the, uh, the tent level with the front of the Tracklander tent topper. So. I've, um, <laughs> I think the dog just slipped in. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I've got that level and that secure that's bolted down to that, which is also secured to the tent topper, the track lander tent topper. Uh, James Road rooftop tent. I don't think I had that last time we did a review. Uh, that thing's bloody amazing. Uh, they're sleek in design, they're comfortable, they're definitely not cheap, so they're not for everyone because they cost you an arm and a leg, but uh, rain, hail or shine, it's beautiful in those tents and they've got a little like kind of exhaust fan at the top, so they do make it, it's, it's comfortable, you don't have the flapping of the old school rooftop tents in the rain and, or in the rain and wind and no rain gets in. I've had rain almost sideways uh, before. Of course, you can just, you know, close up one side, have the other side open, or, you know, the, the mesh is quite fine that it doesn't actually let too much rain in. So, love the James Brood, and they did come back to me with a longer ladder, which was amazing. Uh, once I got hold of the right person, they sent me a ladder straight through, which is uh, obviously perfect to have a James Brood on top of a troopy being that extra height. Next up, hold on. Next up, I've got some stormwater pipe here and I've secured it to the side. I know a lot of people do that and uh, store water in it, but uh, I don't have a need for that in this car because of what I've already got set up. So in here, I, you know, if I'm on a trip, I'll put fishing rods, I'll put 
um, you know, little Marin loops or a spear gun in there. And just so that's all secure in there. It's stuff that normally rattles around in your car. So in there, out of the, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and on the roof. Uh, I've got the awning on the other side, 1.5 meter awning, great. I mean, they speak for themselves. So, and in the front, uh, so front and rear, we've got the Bilstein B60 shocks, which I cannot fault. They're so comfy. Um, I've put them over some pretty serious ground and flat stick as well, and haven't missed, haven't skipped a beat. And on the back, I've still got the Collier Dominator airbags, which I pump up and probably keep it about. 15 to 20 psi, and once again, smooth sailing. Uh, even with you know the weight of this car, and when I've got it fully loaded in the back, it handles it no issue at all. Underneath the car, I'm still running the Manta uh, Manta exhaust system, so the three-inch exhaust system, just from the DPF backwards. I haven't removed the DPF as I said I'd I'd love to. Um, I know it's a sure thing of. Uh, getting your car bloody yellow stickers so for now it still does everything it, you know I want it to power wise it still sounds amazing when you put your foot down so I really don't have a need to get rid of that DPF besides obviously just wanting it to sound that little bit better but there's other ways around that setting up an exhaust system obviously besides removing your DPF uh, what else we got um, Black, the black duck seat covers. I have still got the same seat covers on, and uh, you know, 80, 90,000 k's onwards, uh, and they barely look like they've. Uh, yeah, they they're still crisp. They're still doing their job. Um, absolutely love the black duck seat covers. They, I could take them off, and the seats would be brand bloody new. So, speaking of the seats. Toyota, my god, they are shit house. Um, I've never known cars to have to change your seats. Uh, you know, every car, every model. They're so bad. They don't even, my driver's seat doesn't even face directly square. It's like, got a slight tilt to it and tilts this way. Uh, so, when I eventually have some money, that'll be the first thing I get rid of because um, if I could have, I would have got rid of them instantly. Uh, they weren't too bad to about 30,000 Ks, but the last 50,000 Ks, um, they're just no good. They, I get sore neck, I get a sore back. Um, the headrests uh, shit out, they fall down onto the rods, so then they become kind of on an angle. Uh, which I'll show you, I'll show you footage of, but uh, yeah, absolutely no good. Probably the worst seats I've ever sat in um, in this day and age, of course. So Toyota, beautiful engines and cars, horrible seats, sorted out. Uh, the unit and communications. Uh, I, I, I can't see a reason to ever change. Um, running with a few different systems at the moment. I can't show you this one because it's a new model, but they have included the, uh, the old fold down. So if you are driving, not that I'll have an issue because even if I fold down a 10 foot high um, two way, I'm still probably gonna hit the, uh, the James Bird rooftop tent. But perfect if you've got a smaller car and you are going in underground car parks, float around the city and you just, it's not necessary to have it up all the time. Uh, the draw system, so well, installed in the draw system, I've still got the manager, uh, manager 30 from Red Arc, which has been great, although not sure whether it's the, sister, the Red Arc system or not. Um, I can't actually blame anyone at the moment because I can't find the fault but it doesn't seem to be holding charge uh, as well as it used to uh, with a brand new battery. But I did have a draw system installed um, and 
you know, it only takes one little bolt to slightly come loose and kind of shorten the uh, shorten the fuse or uh, just not give it that connection that it needs. So having a little bit of issues with the um, maintaining the dual battery charge. But other than that, the Manager 30 has been great. Um, it's doing everything I have, have asked for. So I'm still running with the 1000 watt under the seat inverter and the 350 watt inverter at the back for when I'm parked up and don't need to like plug stuff in on the go. Uh, the core system I've installed is absolutely incredible. I love it. Um, it just puts everything in one place. It stops things bouncing around, hitting the edge of your back of your doors, scratching paint off. Uh, you can secure load on top of the drawers. Uh, you've got your three main drawers, you've got the fridge slide there, so you can pull out whatever I need. Um, and I'm running, still running with a Dometic 75 litre Waco. So the 75 litre Waco is, is perfect for me. Fridge, freezer, two fridges, two freezers, whatever you need at the time, it'll do it. And uh, it does remain cold, even in the desert. You know, you'll lose a few degrees at night if for whatever reason my battery turned off. So uh, it'll last for the morning, put the car back on, charge everything back up or unless the solar kicks in and, and obviously charges itself. So. On the back, on the back of the car, I have a Outback Accessories dual wheel carrier. Now, that's been awesome. I love it. It's great to get all the weight off the hinges of the doors. And so I've got two wheel, two spare wheels on the back uh, for obviously two punches. Now, with those two wheels though, because I have 50 mil offsets on the back to align the Toyota wheel track, I have to carry one for the front set, one for the back set. So if I had two front two front tire blowouts, uh, it's just going to be a little bit tricky to, you're not going to be able to drive too fast and it's going to put your wheels off balance if you have to use one of your back tires on the front. I uh, can't remember which way it is, but one will not work on the other. So realistically, you've got one spare tire for the front, one for the back. The wheel carrier though is great, it's solid, uh, haven't had an issue with it yet. Banged into stuff like you know tree stumps and that on the back and it's just a solid bump and it doesn't bend in, it doesn't break anything. Although the LED lights, I'm not sure if they've changed their system at the moment or since I bought mine, but the LED light system is, uh, is really nothing flash. You've got this beautiful, strong, uh, bar system and then plastic lights held on with two flimsy little screws so I've actually got duct tape holding uh, one of the lights in which is seems to be doing a much better job than the original screws did because it was just rattling the whole time so I don't think I'll <laughs> I think I'll leave the duct tape on so the question I get a lot is the fuel efficiency of the car so with this car, it's sitting at about three and a half tons. Uh, it's got two 90 litre fuel tanks, so 180 litres all up. Now, I tend to get about, depending on the wind, if you get a headwind, it can throw everything, um, throw everything out of the water. So, generally, I get about 11, 11, 1150 Ks. So, maybe 1200 uh, from both tanks. And that's pretty stock standard. It doesn't fluctuate too much from that. Uh, road noise with the Cooper tires is another question I get. Uh, I find little to none. So I heard a uh, word on the street before I had Coopers years and years ago uh, was that they were quite loud. Uh, whatever they've done to change that is has dramatically improved them because I don't get any road noise at all. The only noise I really get is like from the amount of stuff I have on the roof, which you'd expect anyway. So. Um, and also with the drawer system, you've got, uh, I've also got the 40 litre water tank uh, connected to a, a, basically a little water pump, on pump, whatever you want to call it, and through to the back of the, uh, to the front of the drawer system. So 40 litre water tank sits flush on the back of the drawer system on the right angle, and then 
uh, squeezes between the angle, back angle of the back of the rear seat. So basically one side like this is your bottom and the other side is like this. So about 40 litres in there and that is amazing. I can fill it up with a hose, just connect it up, fills up itself. Uh, as soon as it's full, it's got a little overflow hose down the bottom uh, under the rear bar. And, uh, and then from there, you know, all I do is plug in my little shower hose or my water hose, turn on the pump, I've got access to 40 litres. So that's amazing when I'm driving around. I don't have to secure water, uh, big water jerrys or anything in the car. It's all there. It's sitting, you know, halfway between the axle. It's, it's perfect. The diff lockers in this car, um, so four wheel drive, with four wheel drive these days, I actually get out and manually turn it to um, to lock, so I lock the hubs. Uh, I, auto hubs are great, but I have heard of people that they slip and they can, um, I mean, uh, the way someone put it to me is a lever is better than a switch, and I completely agree. So, uh, you know, basically saying that just turning on your, um, Full drive in the car is not as good as coming out locking it in place yourself so I've started doing that whenever I'm not just doing a two-minute forward drive I'm out of the car lock it and, uh, and away you go so I probably will end up replacing them back to the old um, just get out your car and turn them yourself with your fingers hubs because I just think it's more practical uh, I prefer it you know prefer the old school kind of stuff so um, I have also got the uh, a dual fuel filter put in as well now, which is just a safety barrier. I've had it for about 40,000 Ks now, maybe 50. And it's just a safety barrier, when, especially when you're traveling remote, uh, just to have that extra filtration of your fuel. To be honest, I think most of the places in the city are the ones watering, watering your fuel down. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if the one, the more remote you go, the better off the fuel. But I know condensation and, um, and whatnot in fuel tanks in environments where the temperature changes dramatically. So in the desert where it's really hot in the day and really cool at night, it can create um, condensation within the tanks, especially if they're not completely airtight. So it's, it's just a safety thing. It doesn't cost too much and I highly recommend it. Uh, look after your engine I mean we drive cars and we love cars because of their engine and their look so you got to try and look after both of them whichever way you can uh, and I think that is I think that's about it uh, look like I said the car is incredible it does everything I've asked it to do it's it is heavy but my god I wouldn't change it for the world I'll, love this car i fall in love with the troopy and uh and i can see why there's a bit of a cult following for the troopies uh look and just cruisers in general they're absolute weapons um and they just become part of you you know they're an extension of your body so i love it and i'm sure it'll it'll be ticking over a million k's pretty soon so Guys, thanks for watching. Any questions, throw them down below. Um, give us a like, give us a subscribe, whatever. Uh, but look, yeah, throw us some questions. I'll try and help you wherever I can. Um, and look, all I can give you is is honest answers of how they've been. Um, I'm not going to bullshit you on the product if it's uh, if it's not been good, but. You know, I hand selected for this product and it's worked really well for me. Um, I can't say it'll work for you because it might not be your style or, um, you know, it just might not be your thing. So, this gear for me has been great. Toyota, change a piece of shit seats.